Sweet Taste of Cake by The Descendant. Chapter 9. Once Upon a Mattress. It felt good to stare down on the sun. As Cupcake stood in the sunlight that streamed in through the large picture window at the end of the upstairs hallway, she felt the heat across her face, black and flank. Winter wrap-up had taken a day and a half. <laughs> not especially good, but not bad either. After the muddy family had returned home, she had helped wash up their nie her nieces and nephew, and then had helped them lay in their naps. Soon, each of the grown ponies had wiped away the mud and washed themselves in the warm waters. She had been last, and as she had come out of the bathroom at the sound of soft breaths, she had realized that she was the only pony awake in the house. It felt good to stand there in the sun. As the rays fell over cupcakes, she could feel the last of the moisture of her bath lifting from her. At once, she took her breasts and began to comb out her tail, her mane, letting the rose-colored wasps seek out their familiar place. She had tried to find a place in the wrap-up away from her family, desperately tried to find a way to be with Carrot without looking like she was trying to get away from them. It had not worked. And as such, she had missed being with him that morning. She missed being with him more and more. Her breath slowly came to a standstill, and as it did, Cupcake felt, at, felt her head lower until she stared at the floor. She had just gotten to the point where her father could see that Carrot did not want anything from her. That he wanted to give her everything. Wanted to shower her with his love and affection. As she stroked the breast of her mane once more, her plan... Her long and consuming plan ran through her mind. She had to help get Carrot to the bakery to the point where it was prospering on its own, where no one would think that he would need the money. Once that was accomplished, she could start dropping her small hints, let her father know that she had feelings for her partner. He had assumed her partner was a mare, and she had not corrected him. Just brushing the fact that it was, a, in fact, a stallion might cause him to have an aneurysm. Her father would see that they had been working together for over a year, and as that sank in, she could begin describing how wonderful he was, how he had been seeing her over a year. Before her father would have to stroke, she would point out that Carrot did not know who he was, did not have any idea about his business, did not want anything from them. In many ways, she wanted to thank her father for the violence he had committed on her behalf. As disgusting as it was to think that way, she had begun to wonder what her life would look like if any of those other stallions whose parents had made dates had slid into her life with her heart. No, none of them made her feel the way Carrot does. None of them had ever looked at her like he did. Her father would not know the difference, of course. She knew her father knew that despite his brutal, horrific worldview, all he really wanted was for her to be safe and happy. It was the same thing, she knew, that Carrot wanted. All it would take to bridge that gap, all it would take was time. Time to implement her plan. Maybe another year. She pondered her plan again, wondered if it would sound as stupid as if she said it out loud. She knew it was ridiculous knew that there were so many loopholes and chances for disaster. Yet, it was working, she hoped, and every day that passed meant it drew one day closer to being true. As they had spent quiet moments in the bakery wiping their faces together, giving small kisses as they worked, she could d hardly disagree with his choice. She looked at her face to the sun once more, felt the wonderful heat of the first day of spring fall around her as it cascaded in through the glass. In the window, she watched the ponies go up and down the street, saw that they too were rejoicing in the sun. Half of the ponies in this town knew of her plan, at least those in her circle. From the day she had stood, stood in Hyrie's hallway, beaming with a radiant light in what she had found, the plans that the two mares had made passed from pony to pony. They had implored all who that they had thought he would stood a chance of giving away to stand firm, and let them be drawn together. There were only two ponies in this entire city that had been strictly forbidden from learning the rules, from guessing at the game of this. They were at the two stallions she loved most in this world. Quarry, her father, and Carrot, her lover. Lover. She giggled her, to herself at the word. 
A soft smile went over her face as she continued to brush her mane. The word lover had been used to describe relationships far more functional and utilitarian than what she and Carrot had shared. In many ways, she wished she could fight to claim the word for her own use, to apply it to the wonderful sensations she had found as she laid against his chest. It was the only word that she had wished she could claim the word for her own use, to apply it to the wonderful sensations she had found as she laid against his chest. It was the only word that even came close to how being near him felt. A brushing beside him sent waves of happiness through her. She felt herself starting to sway back and forth, madly to remember cadences of their dances. The sway mimicked the way that they sat together. His forelegs wrapped around her, rocking her as the smells of the bakery coasted over them. Her swaying slowed as she remembered the feeling of his nose to hers. As the sunlight fell over, her, the flat, her flat of her breast came resting against her face, as the feeling of the long, slow motions of their nuzzling caught within her. The feel of his head wiping against her, the feel of his cheek to hers floated over her, became tangible. The soft, sweet touch of his kiss. Cupcake's side to side sway stopped as she felt things, let herself remember these things as though they were already cherished memories. Instead of things that happened the day before. Things that could happen this afternoon, she chose. Instead, her body began to move again. This time her motions taking a new direction as the sunlight cascaded over her. And she pressed the flat of her breast to her face. Forward, backward. At first in the slightest, but as the motion grew. And as it did, her eyes closed. She took short breaths as the vision of Carrie's green eyes stared down over her tenderly. As she looked up to him, the flight of her breast became his hoof. She felt it. Watched him as he lifted his hoof to her face. Forward. Backward. His mouth moved. As he sensed the words, I love you. Floating down over her, covering her ear. This perfect daydream moved on as she lifted a stray bit of her mane from her face. Gently placed it behind her ear. She reached up, felt him taking her hoof in his as it laid down upon the pillow. Cupcake went stark still, felt herself begin to blush in pointless embarrassment as she slowly turned to see if there was any pony in the hallway. There were none. Only the small sounds of a napping household beating her as she cast her gaze down the hallway. She continued blushing to herself, surprised at how real the daydream had felt. How tangible and perfect it seemed. Suddenly, she wanted to be with Carrot. Suddenly, she wanted to be looking into those green eyes and touching that freckled face. It felt good to stand there in the sun, but nothing felt like being near him. Close to him. She quieted, quietly trotted to her room, putting the earrings he had given her. Moving quietly through the large house, she left a note that, for her family on the table. I won't be back for dinner, it read. Maybe not. Hopefully not. With that, she trotted out once more down the path into the street. As her hosts sounded out happily across the cobbled stones, she thought about all the things that had happened, and played it to her favor as he planned to move forward. It was all working. And although it would take time, soon she would be with Carrot, not to have to keep secrets. Not from him or her father. She was very glad that was working. She thought of how fortunately things had worked out. She was glad that Carrot had left in time in the mill. She couldn't imagine how devastating it would be to her plan if Carrot and Corey ever really met. If Carrot had learned about her father's business, gave him reason to believe that Carrot wanted something from him. She chuckled. She chuckled at her pessimism. It was all working out. It was all going fine. <laughs> it was not as though Carrot had borrowed money from her father or anything horrible like that. The bell of the bakery sounded out. The Carrot looked up from the counter. Upon seeing her standing there, he was quickly out from behind the counter and trying up to where he, she stood with a fast smile growing across his face. Within a space of moments, their noses were together, sharing once more the warmth peaceful feeling that came when they stared his tuts. 
It continued as the sounds of the first day of spring fell over the bakery. It continued even as the smell of all the baked goods wafted out from the kitchen, from pie to treats, set and sat in their cases. After a good long moment, they lifted their heads. Hi. Hi, he answered, tilting his head slightly to the right to find her gaze as the light poured in through the bakery windows. It felt good to be standing there in the sun with her nearby. I got some good news in the mail today, he said as he t went towards the kitchen. He lifted his hoof for her to follow, eager to show her how well he was playing the game of this. Then he was moving the pieces in the directions he would hope to, to help her see the game ending. He looked up to see her still staring at him with the same expression that sat upon her face as their touch had parted, as he lifted his nose from hers. A soft expression lay there, a beautiful one. It's here in the kitchen, he said. You, do you want me to bring it out to you? Oh no, she said, batting her eyes out. Let's go and have a taxi. She came trotting into the kitchen, buzzing past him slowly, catching him in a nuzzle beneath the chin as she let the kitchen over. Upon the table led some, laid some open envelopes. It was not much of a surprise, as she saw the seal of the Royal Ministry of Fi Finance so she could guess what at least one of them contained. I'm sorry, um, Bola Equestria has ruined my impression of the word ministry nowadays. Ever since I see the word ministry, I immediately think Bola Equestria. Let's continue. She placed her hoof upon them, peered over them. As she did, something of a small game flew through her mind. With a sly glance, she peered at him as he stood there proudly, with his eyes closed and the chest puffed out in pride at his accomplishments. There's three bits of news here. The first that... Oh! She cried, placing her hoof to his face and faking discomfort. It's simply too dark to see it here, don't you know? It... Is it? Asked Carrie as he deflated from his prideful stance and spun to look across what seemed to be a perfectly well-lit kitchen. Let's look them over out in the showcase room she said, tilting her head and hiding her expression. As the soft light fell across her, he saw Cupcake take the three envelopes from the table, lifting them with her mouth. She looked down and batted her eyes again, and as she tried to lightly pass him once more, she seemed to be out so long. As she pressed past him again, she loitered along his body, nuzzling beneath his chin and lifting her tail so it tickled him as he slipped past beneath him. Awareness began to grow in Karen as his mouth moved up and down for a second. He followed her out into the main room of the bakery. She stood there in the middle of the room, where soft spring light flowed through the large windows. As he looked upon her, she still had the envelopes in her mouth, the same soft expression lying across her, the colors of her coat and mane catching in the light that poured over her. She tossed her head as though asking him to come and claim the letters. Chase her, if need be. Inside Carrot, 100,000 voices began singing. Doves flew around, and then delicate beings whipped it around like tossing rose petals. He slowly crossed over to where she stood, and at once she lifted her hose high and trotted to the cash register. Oh no, the flight's not good here either, she said smiling as he placed them on the counter. Really? he asked as he looked upon her. There's not enough. As he approached, she gathered up the letters and scampered away to the other side of the room, looking over her shoulder at him with the letters still held in her mouth. She laid them among the pies that stood in their cupboard. Oh dear! She had told, Hardly any lie here either. Her blinking showed her to be a liar. And an adorable, beautiful, radiant liar. As he approached, she once more affected her disguise gathered up the letters with a revealing giggle, and scurried away as he drew in here. Oh, nope. She called, brushing past him, casting her cheek to his as she missed the letters, grabbed them up on a second pass that sent the sensation of her coat along the length of his body. That's not a good spot either. Did you dare me? She said, affecting the airs of one wrapped in deep disappointment. Is there no good place to read a letter in your whole bakery? Can't. 
He smiled as he followed her through any number of places that would have been far more than adequate for the purpose of reading. At times, the tiny wafts of flour and dust that hovered through the bakery fell through the streaming tunnels of light, any of which could have supplied her with enough light to read if that were her intent. Yet, he sensed, as her giggling sojourn continued, that was not her intent. It seemed to be far, far from it. That's between you and me. In your keyboards, I don't think she just wants to read. He emerged from following her through another cascade of amber light. It stood there blinking for a second as he let the dizziness of her roundabout chase fall away from him. As he looked up, he panned across the whole of the bakery, floor of the bakery and wondered where she had fled to, where she had awaited his welcome pursuit. He took some small breaths and realized he could not see her. <laughs> a giggle rose to meet him. His hose made individual sounds as he turned slowly. Garrett took a little breath and then dared to lift his head toward the stairs. She stood there upon the first few steps, the perfect resonant blue of her, blue of her coat shining. The rosy tones of her mane and tail catching once more in the afternoon light. Perhaps, oh, maybe just some good reading light up here. She so asked, the same soft expression across her face that had been lingering there since he had arrived. Her eyes drifted over him. With another giggle, she slowly lowered her head. Without taking her eyes off a of carrot, she gathered up the letters, batted her eyes at him once more. They deliberately climbed the stairs. I said to lay each motion of her body as he did. Inside Carrot, the chorus sang louder. The doves flew around, around him in a turbulent haze. An angelic being stumped with clouds of rose petals over him. There was a beautiful mare on his stairs. The one whom he loved more than any other in the world. And she was asking for him to follow. He went forward, placing his first hoof on the step. And as he did, he heard her again on the landing above, and turned lightly at the top of the stairs. The letter still stood in her mouth, and as he focused on her, she seemed to sigh back down upon him, as though he was facing into a newborn sun. Her perfect expression draped itself across him once more, and he placed his other hoof upon the stairs. She gave a small laugh, sound muffled in the slightest by the letters. With what seemed like a tiny jubilant bounce, the giggling form of Cupcake seemed to lift into the air. So he gave an ecstatic leap, and then trotted down the hallway and out of his view. There was a clattering of hooves overhead, and soon the familiar sound of a door opening echoed down the stairwell. Inside Carrot, the chorus began gesturing wildly as they held a high crescendo. The doves seemed to be flinging themselves at him bodily and the angelic beatings beating at him with their petal baskets. His libido had kicked into overdrive. There was a beautiful mare in his bedroom, the one whom he had loved more than any other world, and she was waiting for him to join her. Karis <laughs> felt his hooves dance around him. From his words came his mouth like, Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. And the other statements was he only had the most basic control. He fought to make his anxious hose follow his commands. He turned to the door of the bakery and quickly scanned the street. To his eternal gratitude, he saw no pony angling towards his bakery. With that, he quickly took down the open sign and replaced it with one that read, Back in an hour, at once, carrying up towards the stairs. He stopped, though, felt himself spin around twice, and then go back towards the door. As soon as back in an hour had been replaced with clothes, he found himself having to struggle to keep from galloping across the wooden floor and up the stairs. Bow! <laughs> Carrie took some breaths, ran his hoof up through his mate, and with that, walked through the door of his own bedroom. She lay there on, his, on her back, her head hanging over the near ledge of the bed, Humming something low and sweet while she pondered the envelope held in her over her head. Her rear legs were crossed at the ankles, slowly waving through the air as she rolled her hips in rhythm with delicate tune. As he entered, 
He let the sight wash over him, let every curve of her body sit across his mind as he sat in beautiful repose. Oh, yes, she smiled, turning those rosy eyes upon him once more. Mm, the light in here is much better. I like it much better in here, don't you know? The room was darker than he had remembered leaving it that morning. And as he looked around, he realized that she had drawn one of the curtains. The one that awakened him each morning by dropping light in his eyes. She had not wanted any light in her eyes as he laid upon the bed. Now, what's the good news? She said as she sifted her body. That's what all of this bother. He watched her sit up, raise herself so she laid across the bed in a more typical equestrian pose. <coughs> her legs drawn up beneath her. Her mane fell across her face in rose covered wafts of competing tones. As she tapped her bed for her to come join her, it was all he could do to keep from floating there. He stepped forward and laid down next to her. As soon, the two sat sideways across the bed. As he did, the chorus, the doves, the angels that fluttered around his mind all blessed brightly and began to trust slowly and fly away while citing prior responsibilities. Well, he said, reaching in to collect his first envelope. The first good news is, I got the refund check. She looked at the envelope with her mouth once more, leaned to him. He leaned forward and looked into her wistful glance as he pulled the envelope with his teeth. He watched as she spun over onto her back, held a check over her and smiled up to her. Her rear legs fell over him, across him. The amazing sense of her closeness filled him. They, they found some things we forgot, and they added it back in, so it's larger than we thought it would be. Oh, Carrot! She said in a little voice as she turned to face him, letting the check fall past her head to the floor. That's good news! What's he gonna do with the bits? He tilted his head back and forth and looked down to her. Well, there's any number of things I need here at the bakery, but, well, is there anything you have to do with it? I mean, we know we could always have a ni really nice dinner or go someplace. A simple fluorescent dove cooed outside loudly, inside, as Carrot saw her scrunch up. Bring her four legs closer to herself, and a luminous smile flies to her. Oh, Carrot! She whispered as she reached up, looked at his face with her hoof. She was so happy. This he saw painted over her. Soon, her contentment left to him as she guided over him to her lips. The kiss hovered between him. In a moment, he had reached down once more, laying another upon her as he ran her hoof through her mane. Silence held over the bed for a second as the fading light fell through the window. What was the second good bit of news? She asked, letting a few more strands of his hair fall past her hoof. Huh? Mm, uh oh! Said Carrot, the expression across his face like someone caught an enchantment. The local newspaper did a story on small business. It seems that the Chambers of Commerce ran with it. <laughs> Look who got an award for best new business. Again, she watched as he reached gently between them, looked at the envelope. He again weighing it, let her withdraw with what was within. The tail of the ribbon fell away, hanging at odd angles where it had folded upon the certificate. She so looked upon the guilty words, the long, boring text beneath. It told her nothing she did not already know. It said that Carrot was wonderful, giving, and welcoming. Carrot! She spoke in a stage whisper. I'm, I'm so excited for you. You, you could put it about the cast, sister. She looked up to see his head rise, as though anticipating her request. He had guessed correctly. Once more, she called him to her. Let the touch of her lips, of his lips, meet hers once, twice, and, to her surprise and welcome, a third. This one fell just at the base of her neck, and beneath her ear, tickling her in a slice. She leaned into it, gave a small giggle as the feel of his whiskers pressed her coat. This he leaned away as he settled another there. Felt, felt the feel of his lips upon her neck play there. 
as a single angel zoomed in to catch the peeping dove. Carrie looked down over her. He could not help but chance a long look across the perfect blue tones of her coat, down to where her chest lifted and lowered in slight motions, causing the cover sheet to move and the pillow beyond on her to rise in sympathy as each of her breaths passed with a soft sound. His next kiss would do- go there. There's, there's one more good piece of news. My loose gotta be sewn. What? No. Toki whispered as the shadow of a great, vast fear fell over her. Oh, Garrett began, his eyes still closed in a prideful look on his face. I took out one month back, back to pay, pay for a few things. I didn't want to borrow it yet. So, it's going to be sold. She lifted the letter and began to look it over. Her eyes centered on the letter head. And with that, her world split apart. <laughs> and now, if I sign, we could pay less over the three years. Continued Carrot, not sensing anything that had changed as he sat upon the bed, his head held, still held high, than we would if I had stayed with the first for the year. With that, Carrot lowered his head in anticipating once more meeting hers. Resolved this time to take his kiss farther. Anticipated the small sounds of reaction. Instead, all he received was a mouthful of blanket. He sat upright in alarm, looked along the length of the bed. Instead of lying there with him, she was near the window, her eyes darting across the letter. As Cupcake's eyes reached the end, the signature stood out. Reached up to her as nearly a year of careful planning was washed away. As a familiar signature rested there, it set upon her hopes and dreams like a black spot on a page of sacred green, sacred text given to a condemned mariner. Oh no! She breathed as he cantered across the room, holding the letter to the other window as though she believed it was just a trick of the light. As though she could somehow change the words written there by forcing a new perspective. It remained the same. The signature, the one that slowly tore away her plan and read to her careful choices even as he stood there. Cupcake? Braised Carrot while he lifted his body and tried to reach for her. Realizing something was horrible was happening to her. Watching her calmness and certainty drip out of Cupcake. He watched her mar- marvelous decisiveness falling from her in a puddle that gathered on the floor. Oh no! She said, and once she dropped the letter, but it fell through her hearth as though it burned her. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! She cried aloud, her head sitting from side to side, her eyes darting around as though some horror had reached her. Garrett clambered from the bed, half tripping as he fell out of it. Cupcake! Cupcake, what's wrong? He asked, reaching his hoof out to her. Oh, Cat. What did you do? What did you do? She asked as he fixed him in a gaze that was half one of accusation, half one of disbelief. Cat! She says as he pointed to the scene, sir. Do, do you know what that is? Who that is? Please, Cat. Tell me. Who is he? Carrot looked down and saw Corey's name upon the signature. A thousand worries went through him. Why was that name scaring her so? Well, apart from the obvious fact that the one who wore it was a massive stallion and a borderline psychopath. Corey? Uh, he's my loan officer. I... The realtor set me up with him months ago. Back in... Jeez, the fall? You, you have to know him. He was there in the mill that one time. The time he threw the... Is that all? She demanded of him, literally jumping to him and pressing her red right face into his. Please, Cat, tell me the truth. Is that all you know about him? Is that really all? Uh, began Carrot. His eyes shifted and looked for facts. His ears laying down on her gaze. He's got a nice secretary? He's Lizard's friend? Doesn't decorate his office very well. He kind of likes the snacks I bring him? Mm, the golfin in his goldfish in the reception room is named Bubbles. What? 
Tucky searched his eyes, and as she did, she saw worry growing in them. Fear. Fear for her. Please, Cupcake. You're scaring me. What's going on? He whispered, again offer offering her his hoof. With a single huff of emotion, Cupcake wheeled around and stared down the ladder as it sat. She yelled at herself for downing him. Thinking that the stallion who lived to draw the pain out of her for nearly a year would lie to her. She cursed herself for believing, even for a second, that this gentle stallion who wanted nothing more than to hold her close would be so callous. No, he did not know. He did not know. But his innocence would not save him. Daddy would not believe it. Daddy would not believe a word of it. Daddy would tear Karen apart, rage at him for using her to get to him, for wanting something from his family. Daddy would devastate Carrot, break him like all the other cults. No, please. Not Carrot. Not Carrot. She took two stuttering breaths. Cupcake looked up from the paper, and looked to where a set of deeply scared green eyes still stared at her. The ears still back in alarm. You don't know, Carrot, she said while tears gathered at the edge of her eyes. You honestly don't know. Cupcake, he whispered. As he lifted his hoof to her once more. Chloe is my father! She called it loud, her voice breaking as the tears began rolling down her cheek. He's my father! Something inside Carrot snapped. It was as though it filled his guts with an acid, but then began to spread through him, settling in his throat and behind his eyes. He's my father! She repeated, her voice again tinged with tears. You loaned money from my father! Carrot's vision receded. Suddenly, it was as though Cupcake was standing hundreds of yards away. <clears throat> Suddenly, Carrot understood. Understood the entirety of her fears. Suddenly, the full playing field of the game of this opened up in front of him. And he saw the challenge laid before him. For the first time, he saw what she had been protecting him from. For forcing ignorance on him for his own safety. Suddenly, the massive, heaving form of Quarry stood there, quivering, twitching in rage, keeping him from being with her. Suddenly, all of the friends that the stallion had ever leveled, ever lit, slipped past his lips in regard to something as unsuccessful as money. These were all unmagnified a thousandfold. He had mixed money with family. He had put himself in the spot of having Quarry's money and Quarry's daughter in the same hoof. Suddenly, Carrot understood. Carrot knew. Carrot shook himself and looked back to realize he was slowly circling the lair, crying as he did, looking it over as though it were a death nose. Cupcake. Wait. We can figure this out. I if we take the longer period... It won't matter! She said, It won't matter, Carrot. To his horror, he pelted, she pelted off the hallway. Her hose soon standing out the stairs. <laughs> He at once circled around his room, thought about how thoroughly happy the scene had begun where it had been cleared away. Soon he was following her, leaving the damnable lair lying on the floor in the fading sun. Cupcake! Cupcake! He called as he followed her, hearing her tiny sobs echoing through the stairwell. He missed the last few steps and stumbled down, landing on his chin. As he called out in pain, suddenly she was with him, lifting him. Had he known it was that easy, he would have thrown himself down the staircase. As he sat there throbbing with pain, she spoke his name over and over, held him close as the rapid beats of her heart caught in his ears. Please, 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 Cupcake. We can find a way. He, he's not a bad guy, mostly. I mean, he likes my treats. Kinda. Okay. She cried again. Yeah. You don't know what he's done to cults. Cults who just wanted to be with me to get close to him. With that, she laid a litany of horror stories upon him. How she had missed going to her junior promenade because the cult who had offered to take her ha hand pulled up in a fine carriage and had honked a horn. As Corey ripped the cult from the carriage, he had yelled at him for calling her like she was an animal to be rounded up. 
She told him about another pony, this one a dental cult, who had sat and spoken with at the country club. In the bathroom, Corey heard the cult talking about how if he had dated her, it would be good for his career. Help him get closer to Ledger through Ivory. Her father had almost drowned him in the very toilet the cult had been using. He had made the cult's friends watch. Finally, the tale of how one cult had been careful, had avoided all sorts of, sorts of improper property, and negotiated the wires. She could tell that he was like the rest, the first to believe that he had gotten away with it. Yet, she had willfully let him corner her. She wanted to believe that she could have love too. That maybe, if she just let him near, she would be able to find more in him. As they had sat together on the porch, he reached for her hoof. She reached for her muzzle. And then reached for far too much. <laughs> she had cried in alarm. For the next 15 minutes, she thought for sure she was watching her father murder him. Watched the whip crack across the colt and the wetness of blood shining on his colt. It was only by some miracle that he escaped. Only by some miracle that, as her father sat on the porch, awaiting the police in his judgment that they never came. It was that act of brutality. That act of her father's wrath on her behalf. The way that in her father's distorted world for you, he was showing his love for her that had sent her flying, fleeing to Ivory's home. I, I, I can't stand a cat. The, the thought. What is that happening to you? I didn't love any of them. I didn't want to be with any of them. She lifted her face, his face to hers, wiped her hoof across Karen's face as he shook in pain from his fall. I, I don't, I didn't want you to end up like that. She said as her voice softened. We, Ivory and I, worked so hard to make sure that everyone knew. Everyone knew except you and Daddy. I was so sure that if you never got to beat him. Suddenly, Carrie's mind flashed back to the mill. Saw her begging him to leave on that first day he had set eyes on the stallion. Upon her massive father. We, we can find a way, she said sniffling, standing, helping him to his hooves. It'll just take time. Take time. He saw her looking around. Saw her thinking as her decisive mind went to work. I'll, I'll take a job again. Ask the canals for my old job. Graduation season's coming up, and she'll need help. She began. In an instant, she was giving a squeak of surprise. <coughs> Cupcake felt herself being pulled into Carrot. Felt him hobble as he tried to wrap her in his forelegs. <laughs> Please don't. I don't want you to do that for me again. For us. I want you here. I want you with me. As she tried to look out, but she could not raise her head. As he had already been so patient, she had already waited for her to open herself to him. And this had been his reward. <laughs> and if I take the job, we can pay back the loan early, no matter what one we choose. She said the analytical part of her. And, and then it becomes a matter of seeing how long we, we can wait before I tell my daddy things. Drop hits. It can still work, Carrot. It will. I'll just take time. How, how long do you figure? Came his voice in a defeated whisper. A year. Or so. Maybe. A pained wail went through the bakery, and the sound of Carrot hitting the floor echoed among the pies and tarts. Please, Carrot, she said circling him as she had to let her upstairs. I know, I know it hurts, but... It's the only way I can see how this. The only way in the long run. He looked up to her with sunken eyes, his expression pain, cracked. I love you, Cupcake. I just want to be close to you. Near you. She took a long breath and looked down to him. I know. She said, forcing herself to smile for his sake. I love you, Carrot. Don't stop trying to be with me. Ever, please. Never. He said as he rose to his host. The two stared at one another as their emotions settled around them. 
caught in the low places of the bakery and settled among the dust bunnies. With that, he, he lifted her nose, and in an instant, his was to hers. As the small muscles moved between them, something awful fell through Carrot, an insight that socked him. His touch had failed to lift the pain out of her, had failed to free her of worry. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the Mats of the Millennium! That's right! Carrot Cake will face off against his greatest talents as he tries to go up against Quarry! Will Carrot survive? Will Quarry make his, make his threat zone? And are we going to actually see Carrot's poor little corpse in the gra graveyard next to Granny Pie? Find out next time as we follow our adventures into Sweet Taste of Cake. Quarry versus Carrot! Personally, my money is on the big freaking stallion with the large muscles.